It has been nearly a year and a half since my last Q&A video, which is a crazy amount of time. So I thought it was time to change that. And I reached out to you over on Instagram, Twitter, and here on YouTube to see what you wanted to know. I've picked out some of my favorite questions. I've got timestamps down below in case you don't wanna watch the whole video. But with that said, let's get answering. All right, first question comes from Ben, lover of tech over on Twitter. He says, since going full-time on YouTube, what has been your biggest challenge? Or on the other side, what do you enjoy the most about it? So yes, at the start of this year, I officially went full-time with the channel. I don't do anything else. I don't make video content on the side, nothing else. This is my full-time job, which is amazing. And it's honestly a huge thank you to you guys, everyone who watches, likes, comments, and subscribes to the channel. That's the reason I've been able to take this channel full time. So I just wanted to start by saying a massive thank you. It's honestly amazing that I get to do this full time. So you guys are awesome. But as for what's the biggest challenge, I think it honestly comes down to the fact that now that I'm doing this full time, I feel like I should be increasing my output of videos. And so I have been trying to do that this year with trying to push out around two videos a week, up from one to one and a half videos a week last year. But sometimes that's tricky to do because the content that I'm making, like phone reviews and camera comparisons, they take a long time to put together, particularly when you're trying to make it all cinematic and fancy and whatnot. And I'm on my own. I don't have any editors or cinematographers. And so having to do these types of videos and two of them a week is pretty challenging. And sometimes it's actually beyond me and I just have to scale things back and just go, you know what? It's okay if I only put out one video this week. And what do I enjoy most about it? Well, I mean, it's not gonna be surprising, but the fact that I get to create content that I wanna make every single day and get paid for it, it's amazing. All right, next question comes from Karthik. He asks, what are your thoughts about new OnePlus phones and OnePlus as a brand? Are they still value for money? And do you root all of your phones? All right, I'll answer that second bit first. Do I root all of my phones? Actually, I no longer do this. I do have a couple of phones that stay rooted for videos like 10 reasons to root your phone and things like that. But aside from that, most new phones I use, I actually don't root them anymore. But in terms of that question about OnePlus phones and OnePlus as a brand, I actually do agree that OnePlus is heading in the wrong direction with the pricing of their top tier phones. I mentioned this in my recent OnePlus 9 Pro review video that you know, as their phones head over that $1,000 price tag, you know, it becomes really hard to recommend them, particularly to the average consumer. Most average consumers don't really wanna spend over $1,000 on a phone. And so it makes it really hard for people to pick up their best phones. And that is where they do their best work. We do of course have their OnePlus Nord lineup, which I think does offer better value for money, but then you're having to sacrifice things like camera quality and in some cases, performance. So I do think their top tier phones are getting too expensive and I'd love if they could find a way to taper back those prices just a little bit in the future. Next question comes from Instagram and it asks, what's your favorite phone of 2021? And this is a great question. We're not quite halfway through the year, but lots of phones have been released, lots of great phones. And I think it would have to be between the OnePlus 9 Pro or the Galaxy S21, which I did recently review. And I think if I had to pick one, it would be the Galaxy S21. That's purely down to the fact that it's cheaper. And I think it does offer better bang for your buck. You get nearly everything that you get with the OnePlus 9 Pro. In fact, pretty much everything that you get, and yet it's more affordable. So Galaxy S21, but that answer could change in the very near future. When is the app going to be finished? Now, this is obviously referring to my recent Fiverr video. If you haven't watched that yet, I'll leave a link up in the cards and down in the description below. And this is the video where I got five developers to create my dream application for me. And as for when the app is gonna be finished, well, I've just recently finished redesigning the entire UI myself. And I've given that over to the developer that I said I was gonna be working with at the end of that video. And he's gonna be starting to implement that new UI over the next couple of weeks. And then look, it'll need to go into beta testing. We'll need to make sure it works on a bunch of different devices, but hopefully in the next couple of months. That's the best answer I can give at this point in time. What's your phone setup right now? Well, I am still using the OnePlus launcher. I've mentioned this in my recent reviews of the OnePlus 9 Pro and the OnePlus 8T, and I've got this very minimal layout, but the wallpaper I'm using is actually one from Canoopsy. 
he actually creates wallpapers himself and I saw him post this on his Instagram stories and I thought I've got to have that. So that's what I'm rocking as my wallpaper and then I'm using the drops icon pack for the icon pack. I've got a widget from the Ornit for KWGT widget pack up the top there, but it has been edited a little bit. And then aside from that, I've actually created a custom icon pack for the app draw icons using the icon pack studio. I've used the Delta icon pack as the base, but then minimize all of their size so that it matches the drops icon pack a little bit better. If you wanna see a full video on how I've done that, let me know down in the comments below. All right, next question. When is the studio tour coming? Yes. So obviously I've been talking about the new studio for the last six months or even more since I moved into this space and it's still a work in progress, though in the next couple of weeks, some big changes are gonna be happening and then hopefully it will be pretty much complete. I'm gonna do a couple other things like some decor fit outs and whatnot, but aside from that, we're not far away, but it, it could take still another month or two before you're seeing any sort of studio tour video on the channel, so stay tuned. What are your top three apps you're using at the moment? This is a really big question because as you all no doubt know, I feature a heck of a lot of apps on my channel. I'm always using really cool and exciting applications. And so to pick just three, that's a really tough task. So to make it a little bit easier, we're gonna eliminate all of the big dogs, apps like Gmail, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Yes, I use them a lot, but they're boring answers. So I've picked three that I have featured on my channel in the past few years or so, and they're slightly left of field. Now the first one actually might not be that surprising and that is the Memorigi Tasks and Reminders application. It's recently undergone a pretty significant UI upgrade, but I love this app. I rely on it for all of my reminders and I really, really just enjoy the UI and design. So that is probably one of my most used apps and one of my favorites as well. Secondly, an app that I actually don't see in my app drawer, but that I use every single night is one called Screen Dimmer. I featured this on my channel a couple of times and it essentially places a black mask over your screen, which helps to make it appear dimmer at night. A lot of apps that offer a similar functionality don't actually cover the entire screen. So you'll see like your status bar and your navigation bar and they're really bright, which is brutal when you're scrolling late at night, but Screen Dimmer covers everything. And so I do use that pretty much every single day if I'm trying to do some scrolling late at night. And then third, but certainly not least, an app that I featured quite a long time ago on my channel, but that I use every single week is called Bring. This is a shopping list application, but what makes it so great is that you can invite other people to your shopping list. And so, of course, my wife and I both use this app, even though she's on iOS, I'm on Android, we both have access to the same shopping list, which means anytime one of us goes to the shops, we can see all of the updated items as needed. So those are definitely three of my favorite apps of all time. The fact that I still use them every single week and in some cases every single day is a testament to how much I enjoy using these three apps. All right, this next question comes from YouTube and they've asked, can you please tell us about all of your filming equipment details? I'd love to do that. So the key light the thing that lights the majority of my face and this scene is the Aperture 120D Mark II. I know that a lot of YouTubers use this same key light and there's no question as to why that is the case. It's a fantastic light, provides plenty of output, runs off of power and it's such a clean, nice color as well. And so, you know, I love using it. I've actually got one of those retractable umbrella style soft boxes mounted on top of the Aperture 120D Mark II. It's from a brand called Newer and that just helps to diffuse the light as it hits this side of my face, meaning the shadows aren't so harsh and ugly. Now, I also recently started using a relatively new release from Aperture called the Ameren 100X. This is a bi-color light. It also runs off power, which is great in a studio environment like this. And I've got one of those little snoots on top of it to really help direction where that light is going. And this is acting as the back or kicker light, and that's helping to provide a bit of a, you know, fill on this side of my face, but also a nice outline on my shoulders. Now, over the past couple of months, I've also started using a top light or a hair light. This is the Aperture MC. I've raved about this light in the past. It's actually an RGB light, but in this scenario, I just set it to 5600 Kelvin and it just provides a nice little outline on the top of my head. 
And then finally for my background light, I'm still using the old and discontinued Aperture AL H198C. That just helps to give a little bit of life onto this backdrop, otherwise it'd look fairly dull. But that's it for my lighting equipment. But honestly, I think lighting is the most important component to making this shot look the way that it does. As for my camera, still using the Sony A7S Mark II. I'd like to be able to upgrade to the Mark III in the next year or so. We'll see if that does eventuate. But then finally, for my audio, I've got the Zoom H4n, the same one that I've owned for the past 10 years, still going strong. And then running into that is a shotgun microphone called the Comica VP3. But that's it for my entire filming equipment setup, or at least for this studio environment anyway. All right, this next question asks for the Sam Beckman backstory. How and what motivated you to start this channel and content? So I'll try and keep this fairly brief, but about six or seven years ago, I was working as a video editor for a corporate company and I was making these very corporate-esque videos for very high-end corporate clients. After doing that for not very long, I decided that I just didn't like video editing when it came to making those types of videos. And essentially, I really only enjoyed video editing when it was for content that I had filmed myself and when it was content that I was passionate about. Add on to that that I'm a huge introvert, believe it or not, and I dabbled in wedding videography for a little while and really didn't enjoy the intense pressure of being with clients and filming clients when they're actually there. And so I thought, you know what, what's one thing that I can film and edit videos about where it's not involving other people and it's my own content? And the answer was tech videos. So filming with phones and technology related items and apps and things of that nature, I think is a lot easier than having to film with actual people and clients. And so that's how it started and I've never stopped. This next question asks, what is your main priority when choosing a smartphone? Good hardware, good user experience, or good camera? These days, most phones in that mid-tier to top-end flagship level have very good hardware and have decent cameras at worst, which can become better through installing a Gcam mod. And so for me, the main priority is a good software experience. It's actually why I stopped using Pixel phones a little while ago because I loathe the Pixel launcher by default and I'm getting a bit fed up of having to root my phones to customize them. So that's why I now use OnePlus phones because you can customize their home screen launcher really easily. I'm also happy using Samsung phones because you can remove everything from their home screen launcher and then just put widgets and icons and whatnot. And that is really one of the biggest priorities when it comes to picking a phone is, can I customize the home screen launcher to make it look how I want it to look? All right, those are the more in-depth questions out of the way, but there's still so many more questions. So I'm gonna try and do a really quick fire round. You ready? Let's go. Samsung One UI or Oxygen OS? Oxygen OS. What's the reasoning behind your choosing Android over iPhone? Started off because of customization. Now I just much prefer the OS. Best sub $500 phone for enthusiasts? Absolutely Pixel 4a, easiest phone to recommend. Android navigation gestures or iOS navigation gestures, iOS. How to submit my home screen setup? I'll link the video below. Do you play video games? Believe it or not, never. What would you be doing if you weren't doing YouTube? I'd be teaching. Do you use a Mac or PC and also Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro? I use both Mac and PC, PC for video editing, and I use Premiere Pro. Is the OnePlus 8T still a compelling option? Yes, I think it is. And finally, can you start a tech channel with no money? The short answer is absolutely yes, you can. But that's it. A big thank you to everyone that submitted questions. There were actually so many that I couldn't fit in today's video. So if you asked a question that didn't get answered, feel free to hit me up down in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond to them over the next few days. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.